So one question which is occasionally asked is, what's the best EDC? And it's a trick question because there is no one best everyday carry. It depends on your individual needs, where you live, and so forth. Uh, but I can answer what the my favorite EDC is, the one that I actually carry and the one that I use more or less every day. And that's the Swiss Champ. And we'll have a look at this briefly. And in this video, we're going to do a little bit of a mod to this. We're going to change three things about it. One of them aesthetic, two of them functional. We're going to add some functionality to this that isn't already here. And uh, in a follow-up video, we may have a, a look a little bit more about some of those functions that we're going to add. Stay tuned. Now, from my perspective, the Swiss Champ is one of the best options you could go for for an EDC. It is literally a toolkit that will fit in the palm of your hand. Uh, it is quite wide. However, it's just a matter of having a slightly different grip on it, and it's not going to be an issue. Now, this one has been kitted out with a few little extras, and we'll have a quick look at those. And then we're going to talk about how we're going to mod this to make it even better than it already is. So, to begin with the blades, and we'll just go through them very quickly because there's loads of videos on this, you have the small blade. Now, the small blade on the Victorinox knives is actually excellent for whittling, carving, and doing it in a very controlled manner. And, of course, then you also have the larger blade, uh, which, again, for a lot of purposes, very, very useful. They're still relatively small. Uh, they are UK legal because it's a slip knot, so it doesn't lock in the open position. And they are under the length required, which allow you to carry it uh, as an everyday carry. You have here the file. You have a slightly finer file on this side, slightly coarser file, and there's more file down here, uh, which you can actually use as a hacksaw to cut metal. Then we have the wood saw, which, again, the triangles of the teeth, this double row of teeth, are equilateral. So it's not a push saw or a pull saw. It's rather a push-pull saw. It'll cut up both strokes. Then we have, next to that, oops, sorry, we're opening that one again. There we go. You have the fish scaler. There is a 3-inch ruler on this side. There is a 7-centimeter ruler on this side, as well as the scaler and hook remover. Next to that are the Victorinox scissors, which are, as anyone who's ever used a Victorinox knows, excellent in quality. Beyond that, we've got the pliers. Now, these are small, but they're extremely well made and they work quite well. Now, the front of the jaws are good for fine grasping, a little bit like needle nose. You have this slightly rounded part, which is very good at grabbing a nut for turning a nut. At the very base is a little notch, which the camera should be able to pick up. That little notch there is actually a wire cutter for a wire up to 1.5 millimeter in diameter. And then, of course, in this position, you have a crimper. So if you have uh, two bits of wire that you are joining up with a crimping cylinder, uh, that will do it for you rather nicely. Next, you have the magnifying glass. Uh, this is... Swiss Champ's been around for a long time. There have been a number of different iterations. The current one has a five times magnification and will, on a nice sunny day, be usable to start a small fire if you need to, or if you're examining something, because it does actually magnify extremely well. Next to that is a number two Phillips head screwdriver, which could be used in the 90 degree or 180 degree positions. And at the very end, you have also usable in the 90 as well as the 180 degree position is the large screwdriver which also incorporates the bottle opener and wire stripper and opposite that 
is the tin opener, which can only be used in the 180 degree position. And in my previous video, we'll have a link to that. I've actually demonstrated how efficiently that works. And of course, you have the small screwdriver on the end of that. On the rear, you have the corkscrew. Now on this corkscrew, I have the tiny screwdriver used for things like sunglasses or eyeglasses and other precision screws. You'll notice I have a, helix, a helical tinder on there, which can unscrew. This is waterproof or water resistant, but it can be broken up and fluffed and it will be an excellent tinder even in difficult circumstances and there's no other good tinder around. You can cut that in half and use it as two tinders in fact. And these fit nicely on the corkscrew. Even if you uh, never use your corkscrew for something like opening a bottle of wine, it's useful for this. Uh, down here is a small hole. We have the needle and this is like a dressmaking needle which can be used for teasing out splinters uh, or it could even be bent into a fish hook. It has a range of uses. It is useful. Sometimes you just need a pin. Next to that is the small chisel. You have a four millimeter chisel, um, normally used in that position. I found when doing things like spoon making, it turns out to be very, very useful. I didn't really have a lot of confidence when I first got this, but once I started using it, I found it works extremely well. And then next to that, we've got another small screwdriver. Now this is, as a screwdriver, the same size as the screwdriver on the end of the can opener. Uh, but whereas that's in the 180 position, this gives you the 90 degree position if you want to increase torque. Next to that, we've got the hook. And also, and it's come loose, so I'm just going to fish it out. Normally stored inside the that hook, I keep a small three millimeter magnet. I've actually modified this one to have a little ring attached to the end of it. So that can be tied to a piece of thread or a string or floss, dental floss, for example. And it becomes essentially a small magnetic pickup tool. So not only do I have the hook, but I have that small magnet stored in the hook which can be used as a pickup tool. Let me put this back in here. And then, of course, on the end, we have the awl. Now, this can be used for piercing leather. It can be used rotationally drilling through wood. Uh, that's a sharpened edge. You can also use that with a ferro rod. And that little hole means you can actually use this for sewing with. Uh, and it basically turns this almost into a hand sewing machine. It makes a very good stitch and it's very useful. The tiny little ring here on the key ring, I've replaced the original one with one that's a little bit smaller. Uh, it makes it get less in the way of the awl when you're closing it if you forget to lift it out of the way. Now, there are also some side tools built into it. On the awl side, you have the tweezers. Now, Victorinox tweezers are well known and extremely useful or pulling out things like splinters, thorns, that sort of thing. Uh, you wouldn't want to use these, however, on something like a bee sting or a tick, because they'll either squeeze the venom sac or the body of the tick, and that would be very, very bad, because then you're injecting bee venom or the stomach contents of a tick into your skin. So it's useful, but it has limits. However, we're going to have a look at that in a minute. And then on the other side, we have the toothpick, which works extremely well. It's a very thin, flexible plastic, and that's good because when you get it between your teeth to knock particulate matter out, you don't want something rigid because if you wiggle it a bit like this, it gets rid of the particulate matter. If this were made out of steel, titanium, something like that, and you wiggled it between your teeth, you're likely to crack your own tooth. So that's actually quite good the way it is. And then you have 
the pen. This is a pressurized ballpoint pen and it works extremely well. And if you're doing a woodwork project, for example, suppose you split some wood, you're now going to carve a spoon. You can draw an outline of where you're going to be whittling and carving using that directly onto the wood to keep you on track. And this is essentially the basic uh, Swiss champ. Now, obviously, that tinder I've added, also the magnet I've added, and also there's another little addition. Now, you can get something called a firefly, which will replace the toothpick, uh, but I I like the Firefly. It's basically a ferro rod to, designed to fit in the toothpick slot, but since I like the toothpick, I have it in a slightly different position. So if you open up the wood saw and at the same time the fish scaler, I keep my Firefly in there because if you, if you just watch carefully, if you just slide it in there and then slide it forward, that will fit in a gap underneath those two blades so that if you open only one of those blades, nothing will happen. Or if you open the other blade on its own, nothing will happen. It stays in there. But when you open them both, out it comes and uh, it works extremely well. And in fact, if I just give you one very quick demonstration on the back of the spine, I keep make sure the... The saw blade is actually has good 45 degree angles and I've actually further sharpened it a little bit so we have a nice little burr on either side and when you uh, pull like so you actually get quite a decent spark and it's, it's extremely useful for lighting a fire in an emergency. So in point of fact I have two methods of fire lighting in bushcraft context with this. I have the little firefly in there, I have its in, built in ferro rod. And of course, again, on a good sunny day, we've got the magnifying glass. And of course, you'd want to use the magnifying glass whenever possible because the ferro rod is perishable. Every time you spark with it, you wear a little bit more of it away. And because it's quite fine to begin with, uh, although it's very, very useful. Now, I've taken that saw blade and using the burr on it, I've scraped wood to get a little pile of sawdust, and I've been able to light that directly with that uh, spark from the firefly very easily. So it is a good system. It's probably the most efficient system, but because it relies on something perishable, you don't necessarily want to use that all the time when another option is available. That should actually be more your backup. However, those are the basic tools contained within this, and that is the basic design. And now we're going to do a couple of little modifications. Now, I'm going to make three changes to this. First of all, I would prefer to have the black scales rather than the red scales, but when I bought mine, it was on sale, and it was along with the red scales. So we're going to remove the red scales and put black scales onto it. But we're doing a couple of little modifications to the black scales to allow us to add two new tools, and we'll have a closer look at those in a moment. So step one in removing the scales are, comes from removing all the extra bits. So we're going to take those out. Um, now we can leave that magnet in place because that's nowhere near where we're going to be working. But all the other side tools need to come out. Then it's a case of getting a probe underneath the scales and levering them off. So we're going to use another Victory Knox that I have here. And I'm very gently going to pop these off. So that's the one side. And now we'll do the other side. And I'm going to try and work very carefully so the knife doesn't slip. Actually, going through the tool slot is a great way to get the knife, the tip of the knife blade in there. So I'm going to work very carefully because I do not want it to slip and cut myself. And so there we go. The actual original scales are off. And there it is, absent scales. And we'll come back to that in a moment. 
What I am going to do for a second, though, is have a look at these scales because I've modified my black scale slightly, and I'm going to show you how I did it. And I'm just going to grab a little toothpick here to point things out. So on some of the 91 millimeter Victorinox knives is a little clock in this position. Now, as you can see, the the tweezers fit into this slot here. And if we have a look from above, if the clock were in the center, the tweezers would be in the way. So on versions that have the clock, they don't have the tweezers there because that space is otherwise consumed, which is why on the corkscrew side is this little hidden slot here. Now this is not in use on this one, but there is a shorter version of the tweezers which are made for the smaller Victorinox knives, and that slot would be open down here, and they would have the smaller tweezers on this side so that you could still have your pen, toothpick, and tweezers, but it would all be on that scale. So what I've done using the black one, and we'll just pull this out right away, To begin with, by using the saw function on the file, I've first carved this way and then that way, and we've basically opened that up. Now what I've done, I got a spare tweezer. Now this one has the little gray nub. I got one with a black nub, which I've also carved so that when it fits on to this scale, it just blends in rather nicely. You can barely see it. Um, but what I've also done is using using a Dremel, uh, I've ground it away to, into a curve and then ground a bit off there so as to create uh, curved, fine tweezers. And if you compare the business end, you'll see they are very, very different. And this has been specially adapted by me. I've customized this one to help remove things like ticks or bee stings without touching the body of the tick or the venom sac of a bee sting so that this is actually quite a useful thing. So um, I didn't want to make a choice between this one or that one. So I'll still have my conventional tweezers that it comes with in the normal slot on the other side. But in this scale, I've opened it up to make way for an additional tweezer for more detailed work using this ultra fine tip. So we're not only changing the color, we're increasing the functionality that way. On the other scale, obviously the main tweezers cover most of the body. But this area here where you have the logo uh, you'll notice there's a tiny hole there, and that's because on some of the modern uh, Victorinoxes that have the clock face on there, they've also got uh, the logo working as a button so that you can operate uh, this. Now, what I've done, what I've discovered is that if you put a probe back there and push, you can pop the logo out, and this is the logo that was on the black scales. And the reason I removed it is because I drilled a 12 millimeter round hole there. And the reason for that, you'll see shortly once this is assembled. But to begin with, what we want to do are attach these two scales to this knife. And we do this simply with pressure fitting. You can tell which one is which because the corkscrew has this gap, so that makes it easy. And we line it up. You'll notice these three points here match up to these three holes. And then it is simply lined up and pressed on. And just finger pressure isn't quite enough. So we're going to use it. So this is a pressure clamp and it's quite powerful. And we're just going place this in here and give it a good squeeze and what's going to happen is 
it will pop on from the from the pressure so we get a good squeeze on either side and that's that scale attached and now we're going to attach the other scale to the other side so we line everything up and again put it into the clamp and give it a good squeeze on either side one of the things I like about this one rather than a vise is you have these nice soft plastic and so you don't scar the metal. Now you may notice we have a big hole there. And what I have here, and the reason why this is a 12 millimeter hole, is because this is a small bearing. Now this bearing has an 8 millimeter hole in the middle and is 12 millimeters in diameter and is 3.5 millimeters in depth, which means I can pop it into there and it fills that hole rather nicely. Now, it's not particularly thick, so I'm going to actually wet the inside of that edge with some epoxy resin and then reinstall this and let that cure. So the bearing has been epoxied in just around the edge. Uh, we were very careful to make sure that on the inside, the bearing didn't actually touch the metal on the bottom so that this can freely spin. And... The reason I've attached this bearing is because if one were to find oneself in a bushcraft context and you want to make a bow and drill set for fire making, well, you need the fire board, you need the spindle, and you need the bow, which creates the rotational force, which creates the ember on the fire board. But on top of the spindle, you need a divot. And the divot is here on the knife. What we want is for the divot to be as low friction as possible. So having a bearing, when the wood spindle is carved on the top, it's carved so that the socket will just fit conically into there, not contacting the metal, just being in touch with the rotational portion, which is this thin inner metal layer. And that just spins freely with bearings. So there's very little friction up here. So by holding the spindle in place and then using the bow on the spindle, you can get maximum friction on your fireboard. So this gives this knife a third method of starting a fire in a bushcraft context. So we have the very quick and easy way of using our ferro rod. We can use the magnifying glass, uh, but that only on a sunny day. And since the ferro rod is consumable, we want something else. And this gives us that. We now have a divot, which is usable with a fire bow drill set. And the reason why uh, it was put where the logo goes is if we have a look at the original scale, everywhere behind this, you've got a tool because this is where the tweezers originally went, and so we don't have room for the divot there. So in this space up here is the best place for it, and so that's where the logo was. I've had to live without the logo, but that's not the end of the world. And now I can put my original tweezers into here. On the other side, I'll put the toothpick back where it goes, and the pen will go into its slot. Uh, if I take my pin that goes into the tiny little hole here so we've installed the pin we'll now take my helical tinder screw that back on my little micro screwdriver So that's got all the tools on it that it had originally. But if I come down to this end, I now take my 
ultra fine tweezers and slide them into that slot there. Pretty well camouflaged in, but they are there and it has given me these ultra fine tweezers and a fire bow drill divot as well as the more pleasing to me at least cosmetically black scales. So this has been well this is my everyday carry. It's been a tool that I use almost on a daily basis for one purpose or another and have done for quite a little while now. And uh, it will now be even more functional than it was before. So there we have it. One modded Swiss champ, my EDC, made as of now even better than it already was and it was already Darn good. As I say, I use the same almost every day for one little task or another. Again, there is no panacea. There's no universal best EDC. Some people will look at the Swiss champ and they will marvel at how can you even hold that in your hand. But actually, it's not so very uncomfortable. As a matter of fact, uh, I bought one of these very, very cheap Chinese ones that uh, is a copy. It's trash by comparison. The quality just isn't there. But I bought it because it is the same dimensions and I had a little play around with it and just found that, well, yeah, actually it does fit in the human hand quite well. I mean, there is, for example, the Swiss Champs double XL, which is more than twice as wide as this one. And I really start thinking with some of them, they really are impractical to carry for me, for someone else, maybe not. But I find this one to be an ideal EDC because it is effectively a small toolkit that you can hold in the palm of your hand or in your little belt pouch and frankly uh, it's a very practical tool and that's what I look at it as, as a tool and uh, it has all those little things that I want need and actually use if you have a different EDC uh, especially if you've modded your EDC to make it more functional than it was to begin with I'd love to hear about it in the comments and uh, if you enjoy this video please press like consider subscribing if you haven't already and definitely try and share this video because we would like to get this one around a little bit and hopefully uh, maybe get a bit more feedback. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you next time. Perhaps we'll have a look at using that divot and with a, a bow drill set and demonstrating how that can work. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a good one.